welcome to another No and Business Solutions webinar. Um, today we're talking NetSuite Safe Searches, and I'm David. So what is a safe search? It's a dynamic query on NetSuite data that will let you sort out the criteria, it'll let you organize the sorting, and determine how all the results are going to be displayed. Once you've got your results out there, just like any report in this week, they can be exported to Excel, CSV, or PDF, or automatically emailed out to interested parties. Finally, obviously access is taken care of, can be shared with others or retained as a private view. And we're going to go through this now with a couple of examples that I've set up in next week. So I'm just going to flick across. to my home page in NetSuite. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's my dashboard. Um, you'll see at the top that I've got a couple of panes. These are both based upon safe searches. Um, there is actually a fundamental difference here. This, this one on this side is based upon the customer table, um, which gives me certain advantages and certain disadvantages. And this one is based on the transaction table. Um, quite significant and quite important um, to understand the difference that you'll see that on here I'm going to get drilled down into the transactions because I've got them summed up, whereas here I'm just giving a summary view. Alternatively on this one, I can go in and I can start adding records to the um, underlying Anglian Water account, um, which obviously I can't do over here because this is a summary. Other than that, same data is being returned, um, and I've got uh, the same filter options on the sales rep. So, we're going to start with the UK customers one. So, if we go into um, lists, save searches, and pick them up, I'm just going to go straight to the uh, record itself, and here is the save search that I've used to create that view the top, got the name, the ID, etc. A number of different options about where you may wish the list to be available. Um, any, this can be restricted or as open as you wish. Um, obviously, for me to be able to show you um, the list working in a dashboard, this needs to be ticked. And then down here, we've got the sub-list of the various other different um, elements of the search. If we're starting with the criteria, so the criteria under here is fixed. So it doesn't matter who runs it, it doesn't matter where it's being run, and it doesn't matter how one um, adjusts the salespeople that are being viewed, etc. These rules are always going to be obeyed. So I'm only going to pick up records from the United Kingdom subsidiary, and I'm only going to pick up uh, records where the country address in the mailing address is United Kingdom. Obviously, I can do a lot more. So any field that the, is associated with the customer record can be included in the criteria, but also any of the fields that are in associated tables um, related to the customer can also be in there. So you can go quite far in terms of how you're filtering. And when we come to have a look at the summary, view, um, I've used that in there. Moving on to results, we've got two different things happening here. First of all, we've got the sort. So you can have up to three, I'm sorting by balance and then by name. If I flick back to my dashboard, you can see that this view, well, both of them actually are coming out and you can see that where it's been filtered, the secondary is under name. Uh, I can put restrictions on the number of records that are going to come out. I'm not bothered doing that in the save search because I've actually got that associated with my dashboard portrait. Down here we've got the columns. Again, this is a very simple um, search. All these fields are actually coming directly from the customer record, with the exception of my formula here. So. You can use formulas within, within the save search to, uh, 
to generate fields. So what I'm saying here is um, if there is an over 90 balance against this customer, then I want Chase to be um, included in column 7. Once again, back here, you can see that some of them have got Chase and some of them have not got Chase. And if we were to drill into that detail, uh, you would find that these accounts here have got um, over 90 days, whereas these two don't. Again, looking at the columns, anything related to the customer record can be included. And again, as you'd expect, anything in a table that has got an established relationship with the customer record. So, quite an extensive array of information that can be included as you wish. Third element is highlighting. I'm fairly simple again here. I'm simply saying if the balance is greater than 10,000, I want the line to be um, colored dark red, bold, I could change the background color instead. I could pick, put an image there, put a picture. Um, but again, going back to look at the dashboard, you can see these ones are all over 10,000 and the rest of them aren't. We move on to available filters. So if criteria are permanent filters, irrespective of who, what, what, where, and when the search is being acted through, and the available filters is one that's going to be exposed to the audience when they come to use the search. I'm only filtering on one thing, sales rep. Again, as you would expect at this stage, anything associated with the customer record or associated um, tables with the customer record can be included. I'm just on the sales rep. Again, if we go back here, we can see I can change this. So if I change that to mine. I'll change that to mine. So I've only got three because this one is filtering out anything without a balance, whereas this one is including um, zero balances. If we go back to all. Audience, <coughs> excuse me. You can have this as a selective as you wish. Uh, so it could be completely private, just your own view. You could have it public and open to it. So, I, but I've I've left it with all the roles um, available in here. But we can split down on departments or subsidiaries, groups, um, the sort of comprehensive options that you would expect, really, in order to be able to ensure that this view is only reaching the people that it should reach. And then, within the roles, you have the option of either creating at a global level, whether this should be the preferred search results or the preferred list view, or whether you wish that um, scenario to pertain to specific roles within the system. So you can set that globally, or you can set it on an individual role basis. Moving on to email, there's actually two different aspects to email. First of all, you see here you can send alerts when records are created or updated. Uh, secondly, you can send um, emails according to schedule. So I've got two different things set up here. Firstly, in terms of records being updated, I'm saying send this to effectively Alex Wolf, that is me. This could be a formula such as uh, user is me. And what I'm saying is I want an email sent whenever um, I am added as a sales rep to a new record. So um, if somebody's going in and reassigning salespeople dependent on for whatever reason, if I get reassigned with some accounts that are already there or new accounts, I will get an email directly out from there. With the emails according to schedule, what that will do is it will send me results. Now, 
I can have it set up so that I uh, get a result per account. I'm summarizing them up into one email. And I'm saying, well, I want the email even if I've got no results, because that's just something that I want to arrive in my, in my trade um, on a regular basis. I can go and, in my case, I've set it up to come in every day um, and run it at 10 o'clock. Finally, you can customize the email message that's going to be used to send it out. So, I've not done anything very fancy here, but you can also determine how the results are going to be um, sent with the email, uh, whether you want to link back into the view, back into NetSuite, etc., etc. Finally, as you would expect within NetSuite, uh, you get a full order trail of everything that's been done. You get to see the execution log if you wish, and should you be running in foreign languages, you can <coughs> excuse me, put your translations in here. So that's a very brief overview of this particular search that I've set up. So once again, this is how it's going to appear in my dashboard. I can, of course, just run it as a preview. And now I can see the, uh, the results of the save search um, in a full screen mode. Um, and if I now want to see email specifically, so pardon me, if I want to export, I can do it from here as you'd expect. If I want to print it, I can, or if I want to email it, I can. I've got the usual filter criteria that I had on my dashboard. Now if I click edit, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into the customer record because this save search is based on the customer record. So that's taken me in there. Um, you've got what you would expect within whatever you would normally see within your customer form um, that you can drill down to. So that was a simple, uh, shall we say, summary level search. Um, if I go back here now and we'll have a look at this one. Now this is based on the transaction table. And it's slightly different in a number of ways. Same rules up at the top, you know, where you want it to appear and what it's allowed to be used for. When we come to the criteria, um, you'll see that uh, A, I've got a bit more criteria, but I'm now using criteria from the customer record. Um, so the customer has been picked up from the main line element of the transaction, and I'm saying that the country associated with the customer on the main line transaction, which is one of the associated tables, is United Kingdom. Again, I'm checking against the balance on the main table. You can use expressions. So I could say, you know, for instance, customer mainline country is United Kingdom or the Republic of Ireland, um, whatever. The results. Um, same here on the sort. It's identical to what we had on the other one. Again, you've got the ability to restrict, um, restrict the numbers being produced. And now we've got the columns. So what we're doing here is we're summarizing the transactions by name, by grouping them by name. And at the top level, we're summing the amount remaining, remaining, and we're giving it a label of balance. So again, going back to my dashboard, you can see here, that's what I've got. I've got my transactions summed by customer. I've got my balance, pardon me, I've got my transactions grouped by customer, and I've got the balance on those transactions summed by customers. In 
move now to highlighting. Again, the same thing that you would have um, that we had on the customer transaction log. Um, I have the same filter here. Um, and audience and roles, exactly the same. So once you've worked out um, how you wish to organize and disseminate this information, um, all this can be um, created in here. So, so now when I drill, <coughs> excuse me, when I drill into this report, what I can do now is I can actually drill into Anglican water. So instead of drilling into the customer record that I did there, we're now drilling down through the transaction table. So these are the transactions that go to make up the balance that I'm viewing on my dashboard. And I can now drill down into the transaction in here and do anything that I want, uh, pardon me, anything that I'm authorized to do um, that I would wish to do against this so I could accept a payment against the transaction. Effectively, we've gone here exactly as if we'd just gone through the menu system. Um, finally, uh, we've got Right, pardon me, that's the wrong place to go. I'll run the pivot report over here. Now, this is beta. It does appear on the main screen. Um, you can do some manipulation, so I could put balance over here. We could put name down, um, sorry, I could put state province down here. I could put name in underneath that. Um, I could then bring it out by sales rep. But there you've got a you know a, a relatively simple pivot table. I think for anybody who wants to do any um, serious analysis or pivot table manipulation, then you're better off um, using the export to Excel on your um, on the actual report layout itself. So um, that actually um, is a very very quick introduction to save searches. Um, We've covered off today on um, how you can manage the sort criteria to determine the data that's being retrieved, exactly which elements of that data you, uh, you wish to um, utilize within the report, how you wish to highlight it, um, etc., and then how you wish to determine um, who should be able to see the report. Um, and, if and if required, actually make that their preferred solution, um, as you can do with, with any report or list within NetSuite. Um, on that note, um, thank you very much for listening. If you've got any questions or you want any further information, here's the details for you to contact, and um, I look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Thank you very much indeed. Goodbye.